All right, hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to the Digital Influence Show. I am Brandon Lee. I am the fortunate guy that gets to host this and have great conversations with amazing people like Sebastian. Um, we were just chatting, and for those of you that know me, man, I am I am like, can't believe I found another Manchester United fan uh, <laughs> that's going through the same pain and suffering that I am this year. But uh, Sebastian, I'm going to give you a little intro and then um, let you tell a bit about yourself. But All here's right. what I love about Sebastian. He's a guy after my own heart because he's a, he was an SDR who's turned into a consultant, uh, who's turned into a business owner, and he loves B2B software space. He loves sales. And here's his quote. He enjoys talking shit and believes that he will one day win the Super Bowl as a team owner. Hey, if you're going to tell me that's your bio, I, I'll I'll go ahead and say it out there. So, Sebastian, welcome. Welcome to the Digital Influence Show. Thanks for having me. Always good to talk to a fellow suffering United fan, which oh. you know, six years ago, you couldn't even say the word suffering near the title United. But here I we are in, in a different here. world. <laughs> I know it's, you know, my my David Beckham signed soccer ball up there used to impress people and now not so much. But that's okay. Yeah. It, They're like, oh, that's back. that Miami guy. <laughs> it, well, Beckham. there's that, too. <laughs> there's that, too. So, hey, um, Sebastian, tell, tell everybody a little bit about your role? Because our topic for today is um, how to build a career uh, from the SDR position. And yeah. you are passionate about buyer's journey. You're passionate about RevOps and uh, technology and systems and training and getting the revenue in companies where, where it needs to be. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about your journey and that process and, and how you learned and got where you are. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, my journey is it maybe was unique a while ago, but it's becoming less and less unique. And I, I think that's amazing. And so I, you know, as a RevOps consultant, I think my the, the information that I got as an SDR has really helped me because uh, I realized that, you know, when you're an SDR, you are the end user of a software platform. Uh, you have to use Salesforce, Salesloft, Outreach, Marketo, Zoom Info. You know, there are so many tools, processes, technologies coming together to help you do your job. And uh, you're just that end user, right? All you can do is the activities that you are limited to, to be able to do and uh, make sure that they're tracked well so that leadership can make their right decisions. And so uh, now that I am on the other side of the glass, so to speak, uh, I'm always thinking, how is this usable? Um, how will this work in real life? And I don't think I would have that perspective if I hadn't, you know, done 20,000 plus cold calls over, you know, so many companies and um, had to run, you know, at the bottom level, so many different um, sales uh, processes. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I appreciate too is, um people like you and, and your age and the experience that you've had, you definitely have had a different um, process of learning sales than I did. Right. I mean, I got thrown into the cold call world with, it was back in the days of here's your desk, here's your phone, here's the phone book, go sell. Yeah. And um, you know, it was what it was for the time, but when you started and what I understand from your background, like you were thrown into here's 10 softwares in our tech stack and yep. you got to use them and use them all well. And if you're using one, but you're not using this one, then the question, well, how come you're not using it? And you're responding to different people internally. Like that just feels very overwhelming for a young salesperson coming in. Yeah, it, it was a lot to deal with. You know, I was lucky and unlucky at the same time. You know, my first director of sales, he was very pro technology. So when I walked in on my first day, we had every tool you could think of, you know, appropriate for the time. This was back in 2014. So we had our data tool, our outreach tool, the CRM. Uh, at some point I was making infographics in Canva. Like it, it was very much like, um, you know, he, instead of here's your phone book, here is 10 phone books, 18 phones, uh, a video conferencing system, uh, go make your sales. And so now I'm learning the industry that I'm selling into the technology that I should be using. And, you know, 
<laughs> most importantly, how to sell, which is something I didn't know how to do until I stepped foot on that SDR floor that, that first day. Wow. Yeah. Well, and that's still, unfortunately, one of those common uh, problems in sales is, in, is that a lot of people get thrown in sales and aren't trained. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think I was the, the perfect person for that role at the time. I just I take a learn by doing attitude and approach. Mm -hmm. So uh, rather than teaching me how to do it, just throw me in the fire and eventually I'll come out cooked. You know, that's, that's always the way I've learned. And you know, along the way, I did see some folks kind of fall by the wayside. And, and I see it now even today with clients and, and yeah. people that I talk to, because, you know, like I said earlier, you're trying to learn three different whole industries at once. Um, mm. and, and it can really, you know, stop your growth. You know, it's something as simple as not knowing how to use Salesforce correctly. Right. Or any of the tools correctly. So oh, that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what you just said there is really interesting for me. Um, and it speaks to your path of going from SDR to consultant, to business owner, training, coaching this, because you said, throw me in the fire and I'll figure it out. Yeah. I would imagine the challenge is, and I don't, I don't mean this to be downplay others, but most people don't think that way. Most people in general, whether it's an SDR or not, is going to sit down in the seat and say, tell me what to do. And they can do it and they'll do it well, but they're not going to think outside that box to go, I'll go figure it out. So yeah. is that was that really a big part of you know your journey of going from SDR to you know, consultant to business owner? Yeah, I mean, I think that's been the, the theme of my career is, you know, just diving headfirst into things that maybe I should not have been able to understand or do yet. Uh, I right. still remember when I left my first SDR job, you know, we were all huddled up reminiscing, you know, I think it was two and a half years before I ended up leaving. And the, the guy that hired me looked me in the face and he said, you weren't supposed to work out, you know, <laughs> like you were an intern <laughs> that was helping us prospect and we needed an SDR. You were willing to take the lowest possible salary that we offered at the time. And here we are two years later, multi-million dollars raised. Like, how did this happen? You know, how do we find more folks like you? And I was like, well, I've been recommending them this whole time and you turn them down because they didn't have the right experience. So I think it's like a, it's a closed loop, right? You know, we look for these same cookie cutter SDRs from prestigious schools when um, that's really not what determines success in the function. It really is that figure it out attitude. And, and, and that's why I tell people when they're recruiting, you know, that the two most important traits I look for is resilience and entrepreneurial spirit. You know, the ability right. to look at a problem or a company as if it's your own, you know, not just working within the bounds of what people are telling you to do, but pushing the envelope a little bit uh, and yeah. trying to break the process that you're put in, in a good way, like broken so that you make so much commission that they have to change the commission plan, for example. Yeah, that's really good. And what you're saying there reminds me, my friend Amy Franco uh, has her book called The Modern Seller. And one of the characteristics of a modern seller that she really emphasizes is being entrepreneurial yeah. and, and going out and figure things out. So today's, today's topic and what we wanted to talk about was about how to build a career from the SDR position. So let's, let's talk to either SDRs or maybe even SDR managers who are trying to help mm -hmm. their, uh, their team grow. Uh, where do they start? What's, uh, I mean, I think you, you touched on it, right? You got to think entrepreneurial, you got to go figure things out, but what's the advice that you give SDRs to go build that career? And I would imagine most SDRs are thinking, how do I get out of this role as fast as possible and move on to bigger and better things? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, first off, you know, count yourself lucky that you're in a function or, or in a position where kind of half of the purpose is to launch you into a career, right? You know, the best companies see their SDR team as sort of a feeder system or a bench to the rest of the organization. Uh, you know, once you're a very high performing SDR, you can work in marketing, you can work on the product, you can be an AE, you can manage, you can be an ops. You know, of course, these are all limited to SaaS, you know, revenue related positions, but 
really like the potential is limitless uh, when you start from the SDR position, uh, because you're that first line of communication. You're hearing all of the crazy edge cases. You're getting all of the feedback firsthand. And really like the, the business is built upon your efforts, you know, your activities, your outcomes, your results are the reason that the product improves. They're the reason that the client success team knows how to service their clients. They're the reason that the AE team closes these deals because you've teed them up. So like what you're generating is gold for every other department. So it's just a natural fit that once you find which of those departments you most align with, put yourself on that path to get in, into that department. Yeah, that's really good. I think um, so what I what I hear in that is start having a plan. And, yeah. and, and start even communicating that internally, wouldn't you say? A hundred percent. Like you, you have to let everyone know, make as much noise as possible about what your next move is, because you have the leverage, you know, you are generating qualified pipeline that turns to revenue for this business. So you have some negotiating power when you want to move into your next role. Uh, the kind of the matter or the, the issue is what next role is it? Um, and, you know, take some time, you know, in month three, you should not be raising your hand saying I'm ready to be an AE, uh, unless, you know, in some edge cases that might work. Uh, but, you know, once you get kind of midway through that year, towards the end of the year, you start to understand where your natural skills and where you want to go fits in with what the company needs. It's, it's all about aligning your incentives with the companies. Right. So I have a question for you that um, is honestly very personal. Uh, yeah. My our oldest daughter just graduated from college. She has a degree in marketing and data analytics. Nice. And uh, she she came to me the other day and said, I don't want to go into sales, but most of the roles that are available, like for me, are in an SDR or a BDR role. Yeah. And uh, what would what would you say to her at that point? Uh, that's a that's a good question. I think I would try to find the things that she's done that align with sales and, and the reason why she doesn't want to go into sales. I think, you know, popular culture has put the salesperson as, you know, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross, mm -hmm. Wolf of Wall Street, car salesman. And so there's this imagery around a yeah. salesperson that they're fast talking, that they're convincing people, you know, that it's your job to kind of strong arm people into fitting into a box so that your company can make some money. But I don't think that that's the case, at least from the SDR position. You know, what you're really doing is you're creating connections, you're engaging with people, you're providing value, and then you're starting a project. Uh, I hear a lot of folks say like, you know, sales is problem solving. I actually don't think that's the case either. Uh, you're really a, a project manager. The outcome of your work might be a problem solved, but so many other people are involved along that path. You know, mm -hmm. a client success person is more of a problem solver than a salesperson is. Uh, what you're really doing is creating that excitement helping people realize that there actually is a problem and then showing them the value of solving it and then setting them on that path. And, you know, she we, might be interested in that, you know, because it's not convincing. It's not, you know, calling a million people and, and trying to get them to do something for you. It's, it's more organic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to uh, send this episode to her and <laughs> tell her that, that Sebastian had very wise words for her to consider. So I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. I'm Thank glad you to help. That. Yeah. I appreciate that. I have some that. connections for her too, if she, if she wants an SDR job. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. So um, let's talk, talk a little bit about, if you will, um, the role of the SDR right now. And, and you set up systems and strategies and tech stacks for companies. What is the path? Like, I mean, we want obviously SDRs need to start getting successful and using the tech and being successful in that and generating revenue. But if we're talking about yeah. how to build your career from there, what are the things that they should be focused on in those, in those early, early days in their role? Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, do your current job well. Uh, nothing can happen unless you're doing the first thing well. Um, no matter how well prepared you are to be a manager, if you're not hitting quota, 
you're never going to be promoted to a manager. Um, so first off, perform at a high level uh, and generate that internal leverage for yourself. Uh, secondly, find an internal champion. You know, you are selling yourself into your next role. So make sure that your manager, your director, your VP, in small case, small company cases, your founder, they all know that one, you're crushing it, and two, you have a plan for yourself, uh, and you want that to fit within the company's goals. Uh, of course, not everything is perfect. You're not always going to find that next step in your career at your current company. Uh, and so spread yourself out. Uh, make it known on social. I think LinkedIn is a great place for this to happen. Document your journey as an SDR. Talk about the things that you're learning in the public space and what your next step is. Because if there's no room on your current team for an SDR manager, and you've been talking about becoming an SDR manager on LinkedIn for the last six months, and you're a high performing SDR, you have a long list of job offers ready for you. As soon as you make that post saying, I'm looking for my next step. So really, it's just creating that buzz and awareness around yourself as a, you know, an instrument of value and, and that you can move yourself into that next role, whether it's internal at, or at another company. Yeah, that's that's really good. So I, I it reminds me of a story of um, one of our clients who young SDR um, started using social media better, opening up, as I say, open your digital mouth and sharing his experience. Yeah. And and then one day he sent me a message and said, uh, hey, I've get, I, I got recruited and I moved up faster than I expected to out of SDR into a new position. My pay's doubled, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much at my social presence and being active was what got me on their radar. And with, you know, my show is called the Digital Influence Show. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about how would an SDR balance that? Like, I believe their influence, and you and I chatted about this briefly before, it's, it's still who you know, not just what you know. And it's yeah. more who you know. So it's internally, as you said, make your plans known internally and, and where you'd like to go. But you brought up social and sharing that and, and you know, having that job ready for you when, when you announce to the world that you're ready for the next opportunity. How do they navigate that? How can an, an SDR navigate that with doing their job and preparing for their next thing through social media, which is their personal account, but companies a lot of times expect it to be used for their revenue purposes only? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there's a natural um, kind of misalignment there where, you know, for example, if, if I'm selling HR technology, my boss doesn't want me posting about being an SDR all day. My boss wants me posting about HR, you know, the news, the trends, the technologies in that world. Uh, but I think you can do both. And, and I think, you know, most SDR positions that I've seen, they have a heavy element of selling on social. You know, connecting with your buyers on LinkedIn, sending them messages, sharing, you know, timely updates. But it doesn't have to be all one thing. I mean, look at my feed, for example. I talk about, you know, different topics from all different ranges of, of places. And so I think you can, you know, establish yourself as an expert in your industry while also describing your journey in a way that other people that are also going through it will engage. Uh, separately, there are tons of communities out there. Uh, and I think community is one of the best ways to amplify yourself socially uh, in a way that doesn't you know, hijack your LinkedIn, for example. You know, there is a you know, pavilion. Uh, RevOps Co-op is one for RevOps. Rev Genius is one that's really large. And if you find these places where there are other people in sales, people like you, people going through the same things that you're going through every day, you can connect with them, you can share your experiences, and then those are the people that you go to when it's time to make your next move. Whether it's a sales director that you connected with on Pavilion that's now hiring or a fellow SDR that you're doing Rev League with in Rev Genius and, you know, their boss is hiring. So they're now bringing you onto the team. You know, it doesn't have to just be LinkedIn. Uh, there are Slack communities. There are forums. There are Quora groups. There's a pretty active Reddit thread. Like, 
find find those ways and again think outside of the box and just put yourself out there you know in, in in all things in life especially sales when you're able to just put yourself out there and be yourself you eventually run into people that think just like you and can provide you value and vice versa yeah that's that's really good sebastian um right at the end there you're saying put yourself out there um <clears throat> excuse me i know that's kind of a scary thing for a lot of people in general, but especially yeah. for a younger starting out in the business world, SDR, uh, how, what do you suggest? What's your, what's your advice for doing that? Uh, start small, you know, post right now, how your day was, what you did, what you learned. Um, it doesn't have to have crazy high engagement. Uh, what matters is that it's happening. Um, and once you start to build that muscle of, wow, that was really interesting, that thing I learned in today's meeting, I better mm -hmm. post about it. Then it starts to snowball. You know, two years ago when I started posting, I was not, you know, at the same level that I was now. I was saying random things that popped up into my head and, you know, there weren't many people reading or listening. But uh, if you just keep saying those random things over time, eventually you'll find somebody that it resonates with. You know, this yeah. world is becoming more diverse. And, you know, something that, you know, that has really dawned on me is that, you know, there are more people like me in this world than there were before. Um, and there are more teams that are looking to diversify from that cookie cutter SDR, that cookie cutter salesperson. And so, you know, just the rising tide lifts all boats. You know, we're all going to get to that next step. Uh, but we do have to start somewhere, start small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like that. I know the the data uh, shows that when SDRs or any salespeople or really anyone, uh, when they post socially about their company and the company message, mm -hmm. it's like speaking to an empty room. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because no one cares. Like right. nobody cares about my company. Everyone cares yeah. about themselves. So when we start sharing things, like start with, curating content from, you know, about the industry and go, Hey, I read this article and here's some things I think about it. Well, that's where people start to pay attention. Yep. But by far the data shows that that human content, as you said, like, Hey, this is something I learned today. And, and I saw, I've seen a lot more of it with work from home. Like people say, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm learning this with work from home. Or I discovered that I'm not driving to work and I'm getting my walks in and I've lost weight or I feel better. And those are the types of posts that are really getting comments and engagement and conversation yeah. flowing because we're all connecting as human beings, which my opinion has always been what sales is about. First yeah. connect as human being, earn the opportunity for a conversation. But I shared all that to then kind of throw it back to you and go, what do you, what do you think about that? And where, how do you coach or train an SDR, or give them advice mm -hmm. on balancing that with the soul, not the soul, but the main focus of going, you got to be successful at what you do, which means you got to go kick butt and grow revenues. Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, follow the data. You know, like you said, if, if you're trying to hit quota and you're just posting about your company all day, you're not going to get there. That's not going to help you get there. Uh, that's not going to start the conversations that you need. That's not going to engage the people that you need to talk to. Uh, but if you are a mom and you're posting about working from home as a mom and doing sales, you're going to connect with somebody who's a mom that is either in the industry you're selling into or in sales. Uh, and so that genuine connection actually gets you to your goal faster and more efficiently than the standard, you know, best practice accepted way of just sharing company information and, and, and blog articles and things like that. You know, the, the simplified version of it is. Uh, when somebody hits your LinkedIn DM inbox and they say, hey, I'm trying to sell to you. This is what I'm selling. You archive that thing so quickly that you can't even read it. But if something comes into your inbox and says, hey, you know, I see you're a mom working from home. Have you looked at this resource? Because it was very helpful for me. Now you're having a conversation with somebody. It doesn't have to be about work to start. Uh, but it could eventually swing back around into work. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite sales campaigns 
that we're running right now, uh, because I went to NYU and our mascot is a bobcat, uh, I am messaging right now thousands of people and telling them that I think I could take a bobcat one-on-one -on -one in a fight to the death. Uh, it, that has nothing to do with business. That has nothing to do with what I'm selling, but it has created some very interesting conversations that eventually we can turn back into you know, a revenue focus, a pipeline focused mm -hmm. conversation. But at worst, I just made a new friend, you know, somebody that I can connect with, engage with. And when the time comes that we can share value or help each other out, we're both more likely to do that because we've mm -hmm. connected on a human level. Yeah. So um, that brings up a question for me. Is that a luxury that you have as a business owner or is that a strategic action step that an SDR can do without getting the, uh, the pounding from the sales leader that they're, they're wasting time? I think it's the latter. Uh, but, you know, I caveat that in saying that in, if you get to a point where you have put out thousands of pieces of outreach and the direct sales approach is performing better than the approach that we just lined up, you better do the direct sales approach. Uh, you know, follow the data at, at all times. You know, what you should do is what has been working and will continue to work. Uh, but, you know, we're lucky enough to say and, and kind of see uh, that the more organic, friendly approach, you know, just be a homie, you know, provide value whenever you can. That is what gets the results. Uh, I think there is a little bit of, of privilege here in, in being a business owner and, you know, not having a sales manager's quota hang over my head at all times. You know, mm -hmm. it gives me a little bit more flexibility to be creative. But through that flexibility and creativity, the outcomes that I'm uh, getting to are at a higher level than somebody who's acting without that flexibility and creativity. So, so I would even say it's mandatory, you know? <laughs> yeah, see, that's huge. And I, I'm going to... If I'm going to re I'm going to ask you to repeat that again, because um, I think that's really huge. It, it reminds me, I mean, tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, it was, gosh, it's probably been a year, maybe longer. I mean, since 2020, everything feels like yesterday or three <laughs> yeah. years ago. Right. But <clears throat> I was listening to, I believe it was the brutal, the brutal truth of sales podcast. And his guest was somebody that it was a, a younger woman who had grown up with one of his daughters, um, finished college. And she was an SDR at Adobe, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she told the story about getting called into her sales managers uh, or her boss's office, whoever it was. And the first conversation, her boss said to her, um, this is this is how many emails, cadences, so-and-so is enrolling and he enrolls the most people in any cadences and this is yours and it was like substantially less yeah and she said immediately she's like oh gosh because she knew everything was enroll 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 get activity, him in the emails activity. make the cold yep. calls act yeah exactly yep. activity 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 and so she started getting nervous and, and I think, you know, the, the woman that was speaking to her kind of recognized her nervousness and said, okay, well, hold on. This is your sales numbers, which were like way up here. And this yeah. was his sales numbers that were substantially less. And she said, what are you doing different? And her response sounds a lot like what you just said, right? Yeah. You take the time to be more human and personal with people and, then when it's appropriate, it can turn into the business opportunity. Now, the one caveat I always believe is as long as you're doing that with targeted people, not just random anyone people, yeah. that seems to make a lot of sense. But based on telling that story, did I capture what you were just sharing there at the end accurately? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it is through her creativity that she was able to get to her outcome more efficiently. You know, churn and burn, it, it doesn't not work, you know, double negative there, but it, it there you'll get some results. You know, if you email a million people the same message, 
at least a thousand of them are going to answer, right? <laughs> but uh, if you take the time to connect with a million people, of course you can't, but if you take the time to connect with a lot less people than that uh, and engage them one-on-one, -on -one, when the time comes, you're going to get a bigger piece of that pie engaged, interested, and qualified and ready to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you're able to scale that, really that's how companies win is through personalization right. at scale not just firing off a million emails, but figuring out what resonates with each given persona uh, and then adding that little bit of extra spice because yes, there are a thousand HR managers on this list. They have a lot in common. They are not the same person a thousand times. They are a thousand wait, 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 wait. different you and mean, unique people. <laughs> you mean a perfect ICP uh, and a persona that goes with it doesn't blanket across to everybody? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Oh man, I thought it was so much easier than that. You're just like, no, every single HR manager is like Mary. Let's just treat yeah. them all the same. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, um, Sebastian, this is this has been really good. Is there before we go? I want to give you the opportunity because I, I really do. I really appreciate your experience, your background. I really appreciate the way you speak about sales and sales processes. And then of course, today was the SDR. I think you're, you're very eloquent and clear in what, then what you talk about the need is. And you also have that understanding in, and I love the way you said it, the pressure of activity versus the, the luxury of doing it well. Yeah. Right. So, um, oh, we got James jumped in here. Sorry if I missed that earlier. I love it. Love yeah. personalization right, at James. scale. Yeah. Uh, and James does a great, great job with uh, being human on social yeah. as well. James, thanks for jumping in. But Sebastian, I don't want to get off, off too far with that. Mm -hmm. Is um, what I just, I appreciate your background, the way that you speak with it. On this topic of SDRs growing in the career, um, or maybe there's sales leaders out there listening uh, to this. What else do you, what's your advice? What other advice do you have before, before we, we wrap up for the day? Because you talked about using social going, I, I heard go slow to move fast, like take the time to yeah. be more personal with people. It's better than sending a million emails with all this competing pressure of activity and revenue and you hit your numbers. And I mean, I'm grateful when I was younger and starting that we had like quarterly goals yeah. And now it's like weekly numbers, yeah. bi-weekly numbers, monthly numbers, and it's just so much more pressure. What other suggestions, recommendations, advice do you have? Yeah, um, I would say kind of going back to something I kind of mentioned earlier, um, once you're put into a process as an SDR, salesperson, et cetera, it is not just your job to do the process. Uh, you are also now in charge of providing feedback on that process and breaking that process. Um, you know, a simple example that I always use, and shout out to Colin Spector uh, at Orem for, for showing me the, the light on this, but uh, we were selling HR technology um, and we were doing so with cold calling. And so he decided to stop cold calling HR managers and actually call benefits advisors. Because when you set up the benefits for your company, you're also going to need an HR technology platform. Uh, they had to change the commission plan because he broke it. He generated mm -hmm. so many opportunities just by saying, yeah, we're calling this one group. What about this other group? And of course he kept his activity high. He hit all those metrics that were asked but he also did that little extra piece. You know, he found a way to drive the outcome that he was looking for outside of the mandate of the activity that he was given. Uh, and he used creativity, at least in his prospecting, to kind of spread his outreach out a little bit better. Uh, and he was consistently number one, you know, promoted a million times. He's like a VP level now. Uh, but I think that is something I think about all the time, which is, yes, I'm doing this requirement. How can I rise above the requirement? You know, what can I do? What levers can I pull? What options do I have really to make sure that 
you know, I'm not just performing at an average level uh, and really exceeding that expectation of me in a way mm -hmm. that maybe my manager has not expected or lined out for me. Yeah. I, I, you know, I appreciate that in most positions, right? If you, you go above and beyond um, that's going to generally pay off. It's just, I think it's yeah. harder in, in today's day and age because there's so Definitely. much, your time is so regimented with yeah. activity. And I hear from, um, you know, one more story and then I'll pass it, hand it over to you, but it was an SDR that uh, sent me a message and he said, Hey, can you help me here? He's like, I've been an SDR for a year and a half now. Mm. And what I experience is all the activity that is demanded upon me actually doesn't create meetings. Yeah. What do I do? Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, well, you know, it depends on if you like hitting your head on the wall over and over again, but uh, exactly. So, Sebastian, I am very grateful for you being here. Uh, to wrap up, I've got a couple quick questions for you for to answer. Uh, number right. one, who's your favorite Manchester United player of all time? Of all time? Okay, well, if we take off-field incidents out of the picture, of course, Ryan Giggs. Ryan Dude. Giggs. Yeah. <laughs> left wing get, of course we don't want to talk about what he does not on the pitch uh, yeah. but <laughs> yeah uh you know what same i've been nice. like Love it. yeah and i and i shared my story with you when i was 13 years old and, and playing in england and all that and when i yeah. became a manchester united fan i actually subscribed to their fan magazine but mm -hmm. back then it would take like two months to get to me via mail right and, yeah. and it, it was like six weeks to to two months so i never knew who won the premier league until usually or it wasn't even the premier league back then but i didn't know until like june july because it was oh, never wow. in the newspapers wow. right <laughs> yeah. unless i called somebody but i got i followed ryan Giggs uh from the time he was i think uh like 14 years old 13 years old and so same um Second question. All right. What's an un, what's an unbillionaire? And anyone listening, <laughs> go to Sebastian's LinkedIn profile and read his about section in like 10 seconds. What's an unbillionaire? 10 seconds. An unbillionaire is somebody who acquires an inordinate amount of wealth while also spreading that wealth out amongst everybody that's helped them along the way. Uh, and the simple example is. Uh, if you buy a house and you're leasing out room in that house, they're paying your mortgage. They need a piece of that house. Uh, haven't figured out how much of the house they need in that scenario, uh, but that's kind of the way that I think about these things. You know, nobody gets to a wealthy position alone, uh, and yet the wealth seems to concentrate on that one person. So that's what I want to do: is is build a. a, a a large sum of wealth that is not solely tied to me, that is given out and distributed to everybody that has helped me along the way. Very cool. Thanks for that explanation. And I encourage everybody to go to your LinkedIn profile and read about that and engage you with conversation on that if they want. Last thing, um, Central Metrics, your company. Yep. How do people find you and tell people more specifically or directly what you do and the benefit you add to them and go, go pitch away? Yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn is the best way to find me. Um, please message me there. If not, find me in Rev Genius, RevOps Co-op, Wizard of Ops, any of those Slack groups and, and more. Uh, and what we do is we help you manage strategically and tactically all of the technology and process that lead to revenue. Uh, we'll start at your CRM and we'll radiate outward, but all of the tech that you're spending a lot of money on and you're not sure how you're getting a return on investment on, we're going to make sure that you're getting that return on investment and that you know the sales team is happy with the way that it's used. The managers are happy with the activity and outcome levels. Uh, and the, you know, most importantly, uh, the VPs and the board are getting the data that they need to make the decisions that they need to. Perfect. Perfect. Sebastian, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. And everybody else. Absolutely. Glory, Man United. 
Lord, Lord, Man United. We'll we'll start singing here in a second. Uh, or maybe I think what we should do is plan a trip next next season. Hopefully, when they're not so so much in the toilet, we'll go go yeah, do that together. New coach, <laughs> new coach. Yeah, we'll see where that goes. Uh, everybody, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, thank you so much. And the in the show notes will be links and everything to uh, Sebastian and Central Metrics. And any questions you have, you can put those there as well. Everyone watching live, thank you so much. Uh, have a great Thursday, and we'll see you next time on the Digital Influence Show. Thanks, everybody.